Hi, and welcome to video 11 of the informational webinar series on the rules for certified school age child care centers. In this video, we will cover the following topics from the rules, illness, injuries, medications, and care of children with special needs. My name is Christina Christian. I work for the Office of Child Care as a regional manager in the Tualatin field office. The Office of Child Care hopes that you find this video series informative and supportive in learning about the new Certified School Age Center rules. During each video in the series, we will explain some of the key features of the School Age Center rules. One of the new features is that the rules have been organized differently to help make information easier to find. While we are highlighting many key features, changes, and new rules throughout this video series, the entire rule set will not be reviewed. Please refer to the School Age Center rule book for the full list of requirements and rules. All right, let's get started. Illness and injuries. Illness. A school age center must observe and monitor each child upon their arrival at the center and throughout the hours of care for symptoms of an illness or physical injuries. A child's temperature is taken when there is a concern. Mercury and glass thermometers are not to be used. When to restrict from care. A school age center must not accept a child into care who is diagnosed as having or being a carrier of a child care restricted disease as defined in Oregon Health Authority administrative rules or has one or more of the symptoms of illness listed in rule except with the written approval of the public health administrator or a licensed health care provider. When a child shows signs of illness, if a child who has been admitted into care shows signs of illness as described in this rule, a school age center must separate the child from the other children in a location where the child can be seen and heard by staff and carefully observed at all times. Notify the parent to pick up the child from the center as soon as possible. Give extra attention to hand washing and sanitation, including cleaning and disinfecting toys, equipment, and surfaces used by the ill child immediately after the child leaves, and keep disposable items and used linens in a closed container in the isolation area until cleaned or thrown away. After parent notification has occurred and until the parent arrives, provide the child with an individual cot, mat, or bed that can be easily cleaned, sanitized, or disinfected after use. Diagnosis of a restricted disease. If any child, staff member, or volunteer has a restricted disease, as defined in Oregon Health Authority under the Public Health Division Chapter 300-333, Division 19, Investigation and Control of Diseases, General Powers and Responsibilities, a school age center must immediately report the incident or illness to the local health department, follow the health department's recommendations on exclusion and readmission of children and staff, and post a notice for the parents of all children who attend the center. Written procedures for injuries will be covered on this slide and the following slide. A school age center must have and follow written procedures for handling injuries that are made known to all staff, including procedures for requesting or taking a child to emergency medical care, first aid measures for serious accidents, routine care for treatment of minor injuries, standard precautions to handle potential exposure to blood and other potentially infectious fluids, ensuring supervision of other children in the group, and notification of parents to any injury that may need evaluation by a physician or impact to a child's head must be reported to the child's parents immediately and documented, 
and any injury requiring first aid or requiring observation must be reported to the child's parents on the day of occurrence. Injury Written Report Requirements A school age center must complete a report of any serious injury or incident and include the following information. The child's full name and age, the date of occurrence, the time, the type, the circumstances, any witnesses, and location at the center or if off-site, the time and date of notification of the parents, the signatures of the reporting staff and program leader, action taken to prevent reoccurrence, and the signature of the parent indicating that they have reviewed it or received a copy of the report within 48 hours of when the incident occurred. An email or text with confirmation of receipt will count as a parent signature. A school age center must keep written reports of injuries on file in one location and for at least two years. On this slide, you can see an example of an injury reporting form that the Office of Child Care has created as a resource for programs. Use of this specific form is not required, but if you choose to use your own form, you must ensure it meets all the requirements as outlined in rule. First aid kit requirements will be covered on this slide and the following slide. A school age center must maintain, at a minimum, the following first aid supplies at the center, in any vehicle used to transport children in care, and for group activities away from the center. They must include non-medicated adhesive bandages in assorted sizes, adhesive tape, sterile gauze pads in various sizes, a sling or a large triangular bandage, bottled water for cleaning wounds or eyes, liquid hand-washing soap or hand-washing gel, sealed antiseptic towelettes or solution to be used as a wound cleaning agent, scissors, tweezers, disposable latex-free powder-free gloves, plastic bags for disposing of blood and other bodily fluids, mercury-free and glass-free thermometer, cold pack, chlorine bleach for sanitizing after a blood spill, flexible rolled gauze, and a chart or handbook of first aid instructions. On this slide, you can see an example of a first aid supply list that the Office of Child Care has created as a resource for programs. Use of this specific form is not required, but you must ensure your first aid kit meets all the requirements as outlined in rule. Medications Prior to administering any medication, before a school age center gives a child any prescription or non-prescription medication, including but not limited to pain relievers, cough syrup, and nose drops, the center must have a signed, dated, written authorization by the parents on file. For chronic medical conditions, a school age center may obtain permission for 12 months or less with specific instructions, including when administration is needed for items such as inhalers. Parental authorization over the phone is permitted for single-dose administration of non-prescription medication. The date and time of the consent must be documented and signed by the parent upon picking up their child. Labeling Requirements Ensure that the original container is labeled with the name of the medication, dosage, and directions for administration and storage. For prescription medication, the label must include the child's name, the date the prescription was filled, the prescribing physician's name, and length of time to give the medication. If parent instructions differ from the container instructions, a school age center must have a licensed physician's written instructions for that medication. Medication must not be administered after the expiration date. Any medication provided by the parents must be labeled with the child's name. 
Additional medication requirements include a school age center must immediately document any medication administered, listing the name of the child, type of medication, the date, the time, and dosage given, any side effects exhibited by the child, and the signature of the person administering the medication. A school age center must inform parents daily of all medications administered to their child. If medication is provided by the parent, a school age center must administer medication only to the child for whom it is intended and follow the directions on the label. Storage of medication. A school age center must ensure that all medications are stored under child safety lock with child resistant caps when available and stored away from food. A school age center must keep medications requiring refrigeration in a separate, tightly covered, leak proof container clearly marked medication and inaccessible to children. Emergency medications. Emergency medicine shall be placed in an unlocked container that is kept out of reach of children while inside the facility. Emergency medicine may not be stored in the child's personal belongings while inside the facility unless the center obtains written parental consent to permit children who have asthma to carry their own inhalers or children who are at risk of anaphylaxis to carry their own epinephrine and use them as directed. Sunscreen and other non-medical items. If using non-medical items, including but not limited to sunscreen, a school age center does not need to document application, but must do the following. Have annual written parental authorization, not use aerosol sunscreen products, and allow children to apply sunscreen to themselves with direct staff supervision and written parental approval. Children with allergies. A school age center must develop a written allergy care plan at the time of enrollment or when an allergy is identified for each enrolled child who has an allergy that poses a threat to the child's health, safety, and well being. Children with allergies. The plan must include instructions regarding the allergen and steps to be taken to avoid the allergen, signs and symptoms of an allergic reaction, and a detailed treatment plan including the names, doses, and methods of prompt administration of any medication in response to allergic reactions. On this slide, you can see an example of an allergy care plan that the Office of Child Care has created as a resource for programs. Use of this specific plan or document is not required, but if you choose to use your own plan, you must ensure it meets all the requirements as outlined in rule. Communication requirements specific for children with allergies. All staff involved in care of the child must be trained on the written care plan. Specific food allergies must be shared with all staff that prepare and serve food. And a list of each child's allergies should be easily accessible for staff, but not visible to those who are not parents or guardians of the enrolled child. Additional requirements for children with allergies. The parent must be notified immediately of any suspected allergic reactions or if the child consumed or came in contact with the allergen, even if a reaction did not occur. If epinephrine is administered, emergency medical services must be contacted immediately and the Office of Child Care must be notified within 24 hours. Care of children with special needs. written care plans. When caring for a child who has or is at an increased risk for a chronic physical, developmental, behavioral, or emotional condition, and 
who requires health and related services of a type or amount beyond that required by children generally. A center must have a written care plan that contains all information program staff may need to ensure the program can meet the child's needs. Written care plan requirements for children with special needs will be covered on this slide and the following two slides. The written plan must include the following, a list of the child's diagnosis or diagnoses, contact information for the primary care provider and any relevant subspecialists, for example, endocrinologists or oncologists, medications to be administered on a scheduled basis, medications to be administered on an emergency basis with clearly stated parameters, signs, and symptoms that warrant giving the medication, written in language that is easy to understand. Procedures to be performed and person responsible for training staff members. Allergies. Dietary modifications required for the health of the child. Activity modifications. Environmental modifications. Stimulus that initiates or precipitates a reaction or series of reactions. Triggers to avoid. Symptoms for staff to observe behavioral modifications, emergency response plans, both if the child has a medical emergency and special factors to consider in a programmatic emergency like a fire, any necessary special skills, training and education for staff and the person responsible for training staff members. Thank you for watching. You can now move on to video 12 in the series.